I have been off and on for years now considering branching into making videos regarding the anti-vaccination movement. It is one of those things that really gets to me. It is the combination of denying one of the cornerstones of modern first world societies and needlessly endangering the lives of children. I have sat there grinding my teeth while I watched these people feliciate themselves for their self-righteous stand against the evil phantasm birthed from their own paranoia about science beyond their comprehension and the blissful ignorance and illusion of safety and control that comes with living in a first world civilization. This issue is also personal to me because I am autistic, Asperger's syndrome specifically. It is not something that I have discussed in my videos previously. April was Autism Awareness Month, so maybe I should make you aware of it. I do not blame parents for wanting to do everything they can to protect their children from becoming autistic, if that's even possible. While greater understanding of the autism spectrum undoubtedly makes it easier for kids to get diagnosed today than it was for me growing up in the 90s, it is still a very frustrating and debilitating disorder. Hell, my elementary school all but gave up on me. They told my parents I would never go to college or live on my own, and they should just commit me as a ward of the state. They gave me an aptitude test to help support their assessment, and were quite surprised to find out that I'm a genius. I am told that there are certain advantages to having an autistic brain, but I do not think they make up for the disadvantages. And I have met other autistic men who are far less well-adjusted than me. Obsessively, anti-vaccine debunking seems like a good fit for my channel. What has stopped me from making a series on it has been a combination of things. My limited time, the difficulty of my style of video editing, but most of all, combating this sort of pseudoscience requires learning a great deal about genetics, molecular biology, and organic chemistry, and I simply do not have the time nor inclination to do so. Concordance made a ton of great videos on these topics a long time ago, so whenever I get to one of the topics covered by his videos, I will make a brief response and then post a card linking to the video of his that best fits the section topic. All of those videos will be linked in the description as well. Instead of a series of videos on the topic, I will be making a single video dump covering all the arguments I have heard against vaccines. I have had a lot of experience with pseudosciences and ideologies, and the mindset is essentially the same for all of them, so I believe in this angle I have something to offer despite my lack of scientific training. It is quite daunting to make a single video about such a large topic, but I think I know where to start. There is a lot of fear regarding the contents of vaccines, and understandably so. Mercury, aluminum phosphate, denatured viruses, they all sound pretty scary, but are they really? A lot of the compounds in vaccines are things we consume in far greater quantities in our food. Others are used as preservatives that would only be harmful if you receive the same vaccine every day or every week. Yeah, a lot of the ingredients in vaccines can be toxic, but everything can be, if taken in large enough doses. You can overdose on aspirin, ibuprofen, salt, water, etc. The names of chemicals in vaccines sound unnatural and scary, especially when they are being put into your children. But if you really understood the nature of these chemicals and how they compare to others that we encounter far more frequently, you would realize how silly your worry is. Furthermore, we ingest bits of soaps, detergents, disinfectants, toothpaste, perfumes, lots of things like that every day, just not in toxic doses. Ultimately, it's the chemical names and fear-mongering that scare people the most. They hear a long, scientifically-sounding chemical name and instantly think it is unnatural and unhealthy. These people signed. We don't know if they thought, but they signed. There we are. Can I get you guys to sign a petition? What for? For uh, banning dihydrogen monoxide. Oh, yeah, I'll sign there. Thank you very much. And our petition woman was getting signatures left and right. Oh, okay, mostly left. But, ma'am, there's a lot of people against that evil water. It's everywhere, and we just really need to ban it. Two more supporters. These passionate, informed people didn't even need to ask what dihydrogen monoxide is. They didn't even ask. According to this article, 
autism is linked to maternal immune responses during pregnancy. So it makes the link that if vaccines trigger an immune response, then they must be increasing the fetus's chances of becoming autistic. Uh, do you think the umbilical cord just plugs straight into mommy's artery? It is a bit more complicated than that. The blood systems of mother and fetus are completely separate. Nutrients, oxygen, they all diffuse naturally through the placenta from the mother's blood into the fetus's similar to how they pass from the blood to other tissues in our bodies. Yes, mothers need to be careful what they consume during pregnancies, but a lot of the stuff in her body cannot be absorbed by the fetus. It is a good thing too, otherwise the mother's immune system would recognize it as a foreign invader and destroy it. The only time when baby gets antibodies from the mother's immune system is during breastfeeding. And finally, do you think that the immune system is only activated when we get a vaccination or when we have the occasional cold or flu? You do realize that there are millions of things that trigger immune responses, don't you? T cells and B cells are activated to defend against pathogens we never know we've been exposed. Even our food triggers an immune response. That's why allergies exist. They are a result of the immune system overreacting to a non-threatening foreign substance. What about the vaccine schedule? Too many pathogens, too soon, too fast. Oh, are you overloading that poor little child's fragile new immune system and causing some sort of dangerous brain inflammation or otherwise compensating their natural defenses in some way instead of bolstering them? Ah, oh, damn it again. These people must think that the immune system only works when they are aware of it. Do you have any idea how many pathogens your children are exposed to? Do you really think their immune systems can't handle a few more injected into them? Denatured ones at that? Perhaps an analogy will make it clear why your trepidation is unwarranted. Every time I hear the too much too soon argument, this is basically what you sound like to me. Let's say the water in this bottle represents all of the vaccines a child will receive in their first five years. And let's say the murky debris strewn water in this artificial river represents the pathogens the child will be exposed to in the same period of time. I am um, I don't I don't want to overload the river's banks, so I'm going to I am going to space this out. Too much too much got to wait. And I read on a blog on the internet, you don't even need most of this. It's just a scam. I hope this puts things in perspective for you. Now, are there risks to taking vaccines? Of course, the risks to everything. Hell, I've seen a young woman survive a car accident because her seatbelt failed and she was flung out of the vehicle. But her father's seatbelt functioned properly and he perished. So does that mean seatbelts are dangerous? No. To suggest that the possible harm from taking a vaccine is greater than the likely harm from not taking them demonstrates not only a lack of understanding of science, but no understanding of history either. About one out of every 100,000 children will have a severe allergic reaction to a vaccine. But when you look at the dwindling numbers of deaths from many diseases, well, they were dwindling until parents stopped vaccinating their kids. I was planning on vaccinating my daughter, but I had a dear friend tell me to do some research. And once I started doing the research, I realized that the risk is just not worth it. No thanks to seizures or cancer or death. No, thank you. You cannot argue that vaccination isn't the right choice. What seems to fuel all this is an irrational fear of modern medicine. It is something few of us really understand. It is also something we do not tend to appreciate until we really need it. Our civilization seems stable and safe. The easy access to medicine and the technology of vaccination has caused us to forget how tenuous life can be without it. As a culture, we have forgotten what it was like to live surrounded by disease and without safe food or sanitation. It is quite simple, really. Amazing thing is introduced to a civilization and shields civilization from something harmful albeit with some minor negative side effects. After enough time and generations have passed, the harmful thing becomes invisible, as does the shield. The only thing that is visible are the drawbacks to the thing. 
so it appears that eliminating the thing and the accompanying drawbacks would have no ill effects. But the bad thing that the shield protects us from is still there. It is true there are risks to taking vaccines, or using any medication, or literally anything. Sometimes doctors make mistakes. I have had doctors I did not like, doctors that offered unhelpful advice. I have been on medications that I should not have been taking, so I sought a second opinion. But here is the important thing. The second opinion did not come from a fruity, ineffective alternative. It came from a better doctor, or at least a doctor that was more familiar with my issue. A doctor can be wrong, but that does not mean all doctors are wrong. I hate to break it to you, but science is not a corporation or a secret society. You can either prove what you claim, or you're a liar. Scientific conspiracies and cover-ups are practically impossible because the scientific method relies on accurate data and repeatable tests. In order to perpetuate some global lie and somehow cover up that vaccines are harmful and ineffective would require manipulating the data of every single test, study, and data set from every institution in the world that studies vaccines. Furthermore, far from being compelled by government grants to alter data in order to keep vaccine manufacturers in the black, the surefire way to get recognized as a scientist is to discover something groundbreaking. And what is more groundbreaking than overturning one of the best supported fields in science? The fact is, the tiny minority of medical practitioners, real doctors or otherwise, who are claiming that vaccines cause autism or cancer is caused by acidic food or whatever, these people are not heroes or whistleblowers blowing the lid off of a, some sort of vast corporate conspiracy. They are quacks. Liars. Scammers. Crap, this one's a homeopath. And really, if I was such an enterprising individual, I could make a lot of money marketing things to communities of vaccine deniers. You know, things that would be in high demand to people who believe everything they read on the Daily Mail or Natural News. Things like new blends of multivitamins, detox smoothie recipes, self-healing and meditation books, Cute little baby-sized coffins, you know, stuff like that. Oh, speaking of autism being caused by vaccines, no. No, 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 absolutely not. There was one paper that suggested one or two vaccines caused several children to develop autism symptoms. It was found to be not just flawed, but intentionally manipulated with the objective to deceive. The doctor that published it was stripped of his medical license and the rules and methods for checking papers before they are published were altered to prevent this sort of lie from slipping through the cracks again. And everything else that has been claimed to support this idea that vaccines cause autism is simply a correlation fallacy. I could show that the increase in video game technology correlates with the increase in autism diagnosis, but that doesn't mean they're actually related. Ah, but of course... We have the internet to thank for breathing life back into a dead issue. We, uh, we really yes. believe in supporting the body to self-heal. Um, just naturally that the child wants to fast and they just take on fluids, they don't, they reject food. And, and really if you just support the body's healing through, mm -hmm. through herbs and, and supplements and a just gentle medicine that's, that comes from food. And Aye, because that crap worked really well in the 1600s. Also, we, uh, we really yes. believe in supporting the body to self-heal. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what medicine does. Antibiotics and vaccines do not work on immunodeficient people. The only way medicine works is with the body. I do not understand where you are coming from. Was there some sort of golden age before modern medical care brought us longer, safer lives and an end of plagues? pestilence and childhood mortality? No, that's wrong. Western medicine did not end them. It is holding them off. There was no magical time when we healed ourselves through food and herbs. Life expectancy has been increasing, and infant and childhood mortality have been decreasing. The idea that medicine is unnatural and therefore is bad is a fundamentally poor argument. I have heard it used against me before. I have been criticized for being on prescription drugs. I've never had to take medication my whole life. You are just not trying hard enough to be healthy without drugs. Yes, I actually have been told this. It is true that the natural state of humans is not to be dependent on medications. 
But not all of us are fortunate enough to have bodies and minds that function optimally without drugs. If you took them away, you would leave people with chronic illnesses or impairments to suffer needlessly. Do not take medication if you do not need it. Do not take too much or the wrong kind of medication. But ultimately, not everyone can function without it. That is why it exists, so the rest of us can have as rich and fulfilling lives as the rest of you. Finally, should we always listen to doctors because they know something we do not? Well, yes and no. It is an argument I have heard frequently with other sciences that are contradicted by ideological beliefs. You know, the idea that respecting the opinions of experts of a science of which one does not understand is akin to submitting to the will of an all-powerful, all-knowing theistic or corporate entity. While it is good to educate yourself by doing research on any condition you have had or treatments you have been given, automatically dismissing everything your doctor says because of something you read on a blog or because you are convinced medicine is a scam is likely to wind up getting you or your children killed. Is not there a reasonable middle ground somewhere? I do look up my medications and ask questions about them. I was recently recommended a prescription for an anti-inflammatory medication. I did some quick research and found that it was no more effective than ibuprofen. So I asked if I could use it instead and save money. The doctor agreed. And like I said, I have had doctors that just did not work for me, so I sought out other doctors. Ultimately, why do I generally respect the advice of my doctors? The fact of the matter is, we do not have time to learn about everything. This is the same argument I have heard with creationists who accuse me of unquestionably worshipping science and making evolution my religion. I accept vaccines and Western medicine for the same reason I accept the theory of evolution. Because they work. It is easy to prove that they work even if I do not understand how they work. That is why we do not have to waste time proving that the previous generations were not lying to us about all the scientific things they discovered. Yes, vaccines are not perfect. Yes, there's some risk involved with using them. But let me be absolutely clear. You are a negligent parent if you do not vaccinate your kids. What's wrong? Does that upset you? That I have the audacity to question your parenting? After all, you know you love your children more than anything, and are making the choice that you think is best for them. Well, so do people who think that prayer is a substitution for cancer treatments, or the parents who believe in conversion therapy. Lots of people have the best of intentions. Well, my family and I can't live in good intentions, Marge. Oh, your family is out of control, but we can't blame you because you have good intentions. It doesn't make you a good parent. I have also been told that my opinions do not matter because I am not a parent. That once I have my own children and the time comes to vaccinate them, then I'll take your concerns more seriously. As if my instinct to protect my kids would suddenly change pseudoscience and paranoia into virtues. Yeah, that's what we call transference. You are so certain of your beliefs that you cannot fathom that I do not share them. You know in your heart God exists. I know you know for many reasons. One was, I'm like you. I was running from God, to, from God too. But I am not easily swayed by fear-mongering and false information like you. My child got a vaccine, usually the MMR vaccine. And then that night, or the next day, broke out in a fever. And then when they came out of the fever, lost speech, lost the ability to walk, basically regressed into what we know as autism, and never came back. The arguments of the anti-vaxxers are bad. It is as simple as that. Having children of my own will not suddenly make them less bad. I don't vaccinate because the risks outweigh the benefit. It really goes against just human instinct and logic to inject something directly into the bloodstream that has a lot of chemicals, preservatives, and unknowns. Um, when really, uh, naturally, things are supposed to be through our nose, eyes, and mouth so that our immune system has the chance to properly fight pathogens off. And vaccination goes against major laws of nature. And I'm for parental rights, not government coercion, telling us uh, what we can do, what we can't do with our kids. There is no other mandated procedure. They are, they are told by the pharmaceutical industry, which makes billions of dollars, 
that it's completely safe. And let me tell you, they've gone from when you and I were kids, you had like eight shots. Now that's up to 70 shots and multi shots. They have refused to, and no vaccine company, no, none of the pharmaceutical companies and government tests have done a thousand kids with the shots and a thousand without. They refuse to because it's not what they want to hear. Because what, they, what they're doing right now is that the pharmaceutical industries are doing fine. They're making billions of dollars. And they're continuing to. They're increasing more shots. And it's at the cost of our children. Because we don't, they don't have the efficacy of these shots, but not the And the toxicity of these things 